Hi guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to another video. Now in this one we're going to be building a diorama start to finish all in one video. Um, what I'll do is I'll film a number of clips as I progress, um, however long it takes. And we'll just bang them all together and we'll just have one nice video of how, how to put a diorama together. And to be quite honest with you, I've never done one before. So, you know, this is going to be a learning experience for me. And we'll just see, have to see how it turns out at the end, really. I mean, when I was building the galaxy, I was farting about here and there, starting on a diorama, but it was kind of half-hearted. I was using card a bit, and, you know, I, in all fairness, that just got shelled. So I thought, you know, and that was because of me, me focus was really to get that, that galaxy right. And, you know, I was really happy with that, and I'm glad I didn't lose too much focus doing other stuff. But... You know, I think we're, we're on uh, July the 5th now. And I thought, we're just going to start over again. I've actually found a few pieces which I've been collecting over the years for, for this project. You know, the diorama's been a, a, as long a standing uh, project in mind as the, as the galaxies ever since I saw it. It's, uh, you know, what, what we're trying to recreate. And I will say recreate loosely. Um you know, is, is, is this diorama here, um, you know, I, I think, I think we're just going to build something that resembles that, I'm going to change up a few things, um, obviously we're, I'm not going to do the sign there, but I am going to put something in place which is more fitting for a tribute to Terry Rossi, we, we built the original model for, uh, in the first place, and I'm, I was looking at all these pictures, these pictures, this picture here, and it, I think this was like printed paper, like, you know, printed paper with the brick design and stuff already on it. And, you know, this, this is a 40 year old build, is this, so I'm never going to be able to, to find anything like that. So we're going to have to try and recreate something ourselves. Uh, I still want it to kind of look like this. But we might bring it up to up to date a little bit, make it a bit more three dimensional and what have you. But you know, I think we the reason why you know I really want to build this diorama is it we really will finish off this thing like and you know if I ever do get somewhere to display this stuff then then you know that'll be sort of pride of place in the middle of it all. But you know, Terry, the one thing I loved about Terry's work is he built he always built. Um, not always built, but he built a lot of dioramas to, to go beside his models, you know, I've picked up a, these are just more small talks and, you know, you know, he just did stuff like this to, to make his models stand apart on the, on the show tables and what have you. And I think he just used balsa wood and stuff like that and bits and pieces. You know, I think, um, you know, just really... Really simple things, but you know they made all the difference to when you display a model and adds a bit to the story to it and everything. And yeah, I really always really admired that and wondered if I'd ever be good enough one day um, to to do something like that. And still asking myself the same question now. But yeah, like I say, I've I've been piling stuff up stuff up over years and. Um, like I say, what I was doing while I was doing that was just, it was barely started and, you know, it was just trying to get something together while I, my main focus was on that. But, yeah, I've just been moved out of the way so I'm not going to damage it like. But, yeah, just stuff like this. Um, got, this came, I, I bought this off eBay, you know, it was, um, it was like a, in the pictures it was a built up showroom really sort of rough kind of showroom thing and it came it, and seller just disassembled it also it was, was pretty much scrap when it came to me but had a lot of signs and stuff um you know a lot of metal fridge magnets period which are good for signs and a lot of um vintage type vinyl stickers uh in all fairness i, I took all that stuff off Sold that on eBay quite recently, actually, when I started pulling this out when I was building the, the Galaxy like, and I sold all the signs and what have you. And um, 
I don't pay for itself in and because I got all my money back and I've all I really wanted was all this sort of building material here and it, it ended up costing me nothing but but yeah I mean um you know the top of the staircase you know there's a, a door there and I think we'll do the same we'll do we'll do a cut off so we're going to be cutting off the door but in that lot you know there's a, a couple of doors on there so we've got different sort of sizes thicknesses of this um this foam here um i think everything whatever we use and i I've, I've not really got a solid plan for this but we're just going to be um we're just going to be sort of we're going to reinforce everything anyway um i don't want it flimsy i mean i've even, even picked while well, stripping a e65 uh bmw for some interior parts and you know this was it the bottom of the rear center console it has a big pull down multi-function console in the e65 7 series nice bit of plastic bare perspex or whatever they use for the base and yeah not that we're going to be using this fit project this was just with it um you know i was I'm pulling out all the the rubbers from the old console that i didn't need but i thought they're really they'll be pretty good for you know putting parts in while i'm building stuff so i started taking a few of them out and i finally bought them to the bench now when i when i pulled this thing out but yeah we've just been grabbing stuff like that um you know i think bought bought a big lot of truck parts years ago um and these resin barrels came came in and sold the rest of the truck parts and under the stairs we've got a few barrels and what have you i think these will probably be bigger in size but you know again good starting base these have already been painted i think we can probably weather them up a little bit more and but you know it's better than nothing and so it's just like things like that being picking up over the years and more recently um you know because that the brickwork where they broken through all the uh, plaster work like i say i want to make it a bit more three-dimensional so i got these sheets of uh, embossed brick um they're actually from a seller in greece on ebay there, there were sellers on in in the uk selling this kind of stuff but to be quite honest it was a bit bland and i would have ended up painting far too much and um so i saw this stuff and it's a bit mossy for, for we're going to be mainly trying to cut around these bits and you know i've got like 10 sheets of this stuff and in the uk you know one sheet of embossed um brickwork you know by the time it's to your door it's about nine ten quid and this this was like 26 26 pound i think there's actually more than you know there, there might have been 20 and 20 sheets i think in there the 26 quid to the door and it's had really good reviews and so i bought some of them i'll probably give some of that to me this stuff to me brother like because he likes his dioramas now uh, the only thing the only mistake i made is i meant to order it for a full sheet this way um which i didn't say so, you know chances are i might just pop them out on ebay like and you know this side at pond um with whatever i don't use like and keep us keep a few spares for myself and keep a few spares for my brother and you know if he wants some of them but yeah just things like foam yeah this is had this a couple of years now um used a bit of this on when i was building that uh last usacc build yeah just padded foam i thought we could maybe use that to, to line the walls and cut holes in where the plaster where the plasters broke through and you know i might use a bit of um tile grout or something to add a bit of texture of it top i'll just like say i'll just have to see what works to be quite honest with you um but yeah we're 10 minutes in and i want to like I say, I want to keep this all in one video. So we'll see more stuff as it as the as this build progresses. And like I say, never done anything like this before. Um, but yeah, now the galaxy's away. I think I can put more time and thought into it, and hopefully build 
build something relatively nice but yeah hopefully it'll show that you know I'm, if somebody as thick as me can can hopefully pull something together out of this and make a nice diorama then you know what's to stop everybody anybody else trying who, who fancies doing the same like and just has a bit of self skepticism yeah self criticism and stuff like that to contend with you know you, you never know if you, what you can do until you try it and that's uh, that's pretty much what my youtube history has been like you know uh, a lot of news and uh we, we just go from there so yeah what we'll do is we'll just cut this clip and we'll go to the next one so we'll see you in a second right then well we're a couple of hours in now and we've pretty much got the foundation for the whole project um sorted now you know i really wanted to get the base done very conscious for you know i didn't want it fixed uh because there's going to be a lot of work on the walls and everything else around it and like i said I had no real plan i knew i wanted to kind of reinforce it somehow but i didn't know how to do it so i've just sort of I've just sort of started playing around with things and I think I'm I'm happy now that I can assemble it and disassemble it as I need. Um But yeah, I mean we ended up using using the thinner foam. Um you know, this this size stuff, whatever it was. Uh it's just about a centimetre thick this stuff. Yeah, there was thicker stuff, but you know, that was just far too big, so that can all be safe for another day like but you know, and to be quite fair, it would have been a lot simpler if if Terry had built it with a with like square walls. But you know, I think you know in photo it kind of goes off at an angle, then in, and then even this wall isn't square, so I couldn't put even fix that wall square to the to the base I made. But um, if I if I didn't do it, I could have taken the shortcut and just done more of a square kind of wall set up uh, but i don't think i would have ever been happy with it like so uh, you know i think um but now yeah we've got it all all reinforced and what have you you know i've reinforced it with sheet plastic and or sheet styrene whatever you want to call it like just got a bit of shavings there but yeah you can see that you know it's not square at all and First of all, I glued this square to the to the side and knew I was off to a, a bad start straight away, but luckily I'd not glued anything. But, yeah, the way I've done it, really, um, you know, we can just take this apart, to be quite honest with you, and, you know, I've just built, built these walls with a bit of a lip on the bottom, um, you know, using the sheet styrene, and it's... It's pretty thick stuff, is the stuff I've used. Uh, you know, it's got a bit of strength to go in there. Yeah, and same with this wall. You know, it just clips off. You know, once it comes to final assembly and what have you, I've left a bit of a lip there, so we can just glue it all to glue it all tightly together and what have you. But the base, um, again, just use the same thickness. Uh, I, I actually started the whole project just by getting one A4 sheet of styrene, laying it on the table, laying some foam on top of it, um, gluing it all down. I used a mixture of like uh, double-sided refix type tape, which I, I've shown before, but it's really cheap in one of our local shops and, uh, and super glue as well. I mean, you really, you can use hot glue, but I've, I've, you know, I have a hot glue gun and that sticks really well to this, but it's, it's just far too messy for my liking. And uh, it would have caused me no end of problems. Like, but yeah, I mean, so that that's pretty much how I've done it. Um, trying to make it as sim simple sounding as possible. But, you know, I think, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm happy with the shape now. You know, I can take all these on and off as I'm, as, as I'm doing the projects. They just slot in there like so uh, and like I say once it's once I'm finally happy with it I can I can just tuck them two sides together, glued glue it down back and that's gonna be pretty solid like. I mean it is pretty solid now but don't weigh much like um like I say we're only using foam. 
from plastic. It's going to probably get a little bit heavier the more stuff we put on. Um, but I wanted to use foam because mainly for the base. I mean, I, I did buy this stuff years ago, uh, so I don't know when I bought it, but, you know, they're just like vinyl, um, sort of matte vinyl wall finish. You get them on eBay and all sorts, and I was going to use that for the base, but... I, I, I don't know, I wasn't I I want really sold on it. That was the original route I was going to go um, when I started mucking about with it the first time. But I, I thought if I used uh, the foam, then I can maybe start carve, like, carving a few cracks in the in the concrete and stuff like that. But I think next step, uh, before we do anything else, I just need to get my door lined up uh, for the staircase. You know, see how much I need to chop off the top of that door. And on tops of here, I've just left a, a bit of a a bit of a gap, just so I can go in and just make the tops of these a little bit jagged, like and what have you. But yeah, I think um, we need to set up. I need to set up the height of the door, and that that'll just lay the foundation for getting all this coving in here um, where it needs to be. I think the door's the most important part parts put in and then we can just work off that build this bit the staircase and then once that's all lined up we can start on the walls and see what we do from there but yeah that that's pretty much that in a nutshell uh pretty pretty chuffed with that so far like um yeah no idea where i'm going to keep this thing when it's finished like but you know it's it'll finish finish off the project so now i've been using uh, another galaxy. This was the original one I started on years ago. Um, there's no way I, with the amount of glue which, and stuff that's flying about on this bench at the moment, uh, there's no way I was going to use the the one I built because it would just end up with super glue all over it. But yeah, I've been making sure that everything sort of fits in there nicely, and you know, we still got the stairwell to stairway to fit in at the back light, but there's enough room for that. So yeah, it's just a case of making sure I'm 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 not doing anything which isn't going to make the model fit on it, uh, and, and ultimately. So, but yeah, I think um, I'm just going to crack on with it, see how far we get, and we'll see you in the next clip. Right, then we were kind of at the point where we need to start painting this thing now. All the hard work's done, all the detailing's done, so to speak. You know, there's, there's not a great deal to do other than put some different colours on it. Um, but I thought I'd stop, stop and do a clip and just show you how we've got to this point so far and, and what I've done. Um, like I said in the last clip, you know, the first point, you know, we had to put in the door. You know, I had to position the door. Um, you know, just because that really did set the foundation of how the height of the staircase and uh, the cove in which we put in and what have you so uh, we did just cut a recess in the top there just so the door sits flat I uh, just used sort of razor blades and other bits and pieces just to gouge out a, a surface in that foam um, but yeah that was that was pretty much the, the starting point we just we did just cut the door off at a bit of an angle like um, you know it's yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of the original build Terry did. So. And then um, then we put the coven in. The coven's pretty much... Um, I was going to do this all in sheet styrene. Because I wanted it to look aged and what have you. And we got plenty of that foam kicking around. I just ended up doing that in... in um, doing that in the foam as well. Uh, I did use super glue on this and where, where I did in the last episode where I said you super you can use super glue I, I did mean to say you know use it on the parts where you're not going to see because it will it will melt the foam <clears throat> anything hot will melt this foam so but I really wanted to use super glue on this bit just to because I wanted it to help me a little bit I wanted the the cove in to sort of sink into the into the wall a little bit wanted it to distort it a little bit also and then I just to finish it off I just started picking away at a, with tweezers just to just to 
make it look a bit crumbly here and there. Um, but I think for, before we put the coven in, I made a sign uh, the, or made the billboard, so to speak. You know, we're not going to be putting the Project Galaxy thing on there, but we will be doing something more as a, a tribute to to Small Talk and Terry Ross and all the other guys, kind of thing. So, so yeah, I needed to set that in place and. You know, like the stairs which we'll go into, you know, that's just made. I mean, I, I had a ton of this, um, I bought that big big box of printer offcuts, uh, styrene offcuts, and they'll just last me a, a lifetime, all, all that stuff, and it just saves me the expense of buying evergreen all the time. And, you know, and that's why I've been so liberal with the, the use of um, styrene on this, because it really, I, I put pennies, it's, probably amounts to pennies of what I've used in this in this diorama so far um, but yeah I think um, you know once we did that uh, we, we started building the staircase or the you know yeah the staircase leading up to the to the door um, again that was just built with sheet styrene and to be quite honest I think if I was, I started measuring too much, I would have, I wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. So I just kind of did a few, a few loose measurements. What you know, the distance between the floor and the and and that, that cove in where it needs to just sit under that lip. Um, yeah, I just did a, a few rough measurements and then just really just freehanded the rest of it. Um, as soon as I got this side piece sort of right, so it, it sits right, then. You know, I want to fussed about distances between between the steps, so all that's just free and just set them in there. Um, I, all I did was make two of these, cut two identical sides. You know, we've got one one which is going to glue to the wall eventually. Just left a, a more of a straight angle on this side. Um, set me, I've set, built the top step. So I glued them in all in place. You know, I think I just set a couple of a couple of sheets of styrene on the desk. Um, laid that flat piece down and just built it on there, uh, just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a recess in there. But but yeah, once once that top bit was glued in, all the stairs. All I did was. Um, Glue, put some glue on the sides of these steps which I cut um, and then just placed them in there and every time I thought I got it round about in the right place I just sort of squeezed them together and just did that the whole way down until we finished the step um, but yeah I mean in all fairness you know doing it freehand it hadn't come out, come out bad it doesn't look wonky or anything and then we had to build the banisters uh, I was playing around with I was going to have a play around with sheet styrene or um or even plastic sprue but to be quite fair I just ended up getting a, a box of the, the large matchsticks uh, matches and cutting the tops off and then cutting them in half and then just working them in just cutting them at an angle at the top just so I'm sort of at the same angle as the, the bottom of the staircase uh, yeah we just glued them in and the banister, all that was, was um, I got a really thick piece of uh, plastic sprue, razor sawed it down middle. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's there's products out there. Uh, there's there's half round out there, which is probably this size, but I certainly didn't add it, and I, I didn't want to trek into town and spend five and a half quid buying a buying a a, a, a pack of that like so yeah I just got a bit of bit of plastic sprue cut that down the middle with a razor saw which wasn't as difficult as I thought you know I thought it'd take me a while but I probably did cut it in half in 10 minutes and that gave me enough to to build the, the rail on there and the top rail on there so yeah that's all ready to paint and um yeah then the walls we well, we'll go on to the floor before we do the walls but yeah like I said I wanted it a bit more three dimensional than that um, vinyl cut sticker which I showed you before so 
and that was to be honest that was really easy to do um yeah we basically just i started using a pencil to start drawing the lines on there and found that that was more than enough to create the create the gouges in the cracked uh concrete so uh, we just sort of went along with that it was just like drawing uh probably took like 20 minutes or so to get all that done but you know that that's going to give me the effects i want you know we'll put some gray paint on there and sort of put some black wash in there and then just stain up the floor a little bit but and then the walls um i think at the beginning of, or at some point in the video i'm not too sure when uh, i said we were going to use some foam uh yeah use some foam to line the walls with and we'd we'd put some sections of the of the brick of that embossed brick paper i've got that tape together i forgot about that but yeah I'll just tape that together for this clip but yeah i was gonna line the put a few squares of this brick underneath and then i was gonna line the, the walls with um with that thin foam but to be quite honest it was too thick for what i wanted um yeah, and just cut holes in it just so it shows all the brickwork through but i think i was making myself too too much work with, with doing it like that um and like i say it would have it would have been too thick for for what i wanted so i decided to line the whole walls with the embossed paper just because i have so much of it to be quite honest with you um and you gotta be careful with that embossed paper what type of glue you use i mean to be quite honest i just use like um tiger seal kind of stuff or some like sealer um just to stick it all down because I, I know with embossed paper it can discolor discolor the patterns on the on the brickwork and stuff so uh, i just use a combination of double-sided tape and and then i just finished off with um a bit of sealer just to, to hold its sights to the walls make sure they don't peel off or anything but yeah and um so i did pretty much the opposite to create me cracks and to, down to the to the brickwork um can't remember which bits for a bit for which but before before i started plastering um and i just really to be honest i probably got this in the house somewhere but i was at the shop and this was a quid 50 for it's just like poly filler, um, crack filler, and that was a mod would have been more than I'll ever need to use. Like, but it's certainly good enough for for what I wanted to use on this project. But yeah, I just cut a load of random shapes basically out of the foam. So I've pretty much done it the reverse way I wanted, um, and just placed it on held it on i didn't glue it i didn't want to risk anything marking my brickwork so i just held it down in the places i wanted to for it to go and then just started plastering around it and once you got a few sides tacked in with a plaster it all holds itself in place once it's going off you can just peel them off or you can you can leave it to dry completely i was a bit impatient and i just wanted to pull them off to see see if it actually looks okay but yeah, once um, yeah, but it'll just create that bit of depth, that three D sort of dimension to the to the plaster work. And another thing, I do, I just wanted it a really rough finish as well. I didn't want it looking like a, a really nice flat, perfect wall with cracks in it. So that's where the the poly filler. Um, came into play and I, I put it really loosely up like really thinly over some of the, the brickwork like and a bit thicker in other places and I just as the, the polyfiller was drying or cracked plaster whatever you want to call it like um because this was cut into two from two pieces I just peeled it back a bit just to put a bit of a crack in the plaster work down there but yeah I think um I think that looks pretty well like so uh, I think like say you know same same for this one really didn't do too much on that one just because we're going to have a we're going to have a staircase coming down the side like and we've got a poster to put up there and a, a bit of 
bit of graffiti to put in down here once it's all once it's all painted up so yeah i didn't want to spend too much time on on that wall to be quite honest with you but you know like i say we're pretty much now at the point where where we can um start throwing paint at it uh again i've, I've made sure i've i've checked for the actual carpets in there um been doing this with throughout like so uh, yeah i think um i think everything's gonna fit quite nicely and then we can start throwing details on it in the end like so uh, yeah i think uh without further ado I, all i want to do is just start cracking on and um cracking on and getting some paint on this i think I'm, i want to paint the the base uh black the uh, back of the walls black so i'll be really careful not to get too much paint on these because i don't want the paint if it if it's hot paint and it'll probably start melting um the foam as well so most of it's going to be brush painted with acrylics but yeah i want to i want to make the back side um a bit tidy like i don't want it even though you're not going to see it i just i do want to keep it relatively tidy throughout like so so yeah i think i don't think there's much else to do but i thought that would be um like i say a good point to stop and show a clip but i don't know whether we're going to do another clip in between this or not or just show the final thing i don't think we're that far off on it so we'll see we'll see what the next clip brings us so so we'll see you in a second so we're pretty much at the point where we want to start putting this thing together now. Um, you know, there's a, a few more details I need to put in. A bit of graffiti on the walls, which I want to do before I actually put it into final assembly. And then once it's in final assembly, we can just do the last little few bits and pieces to add the last tiny bits of detail. There isn't really much at all. Like I think everything's pretty much done. But I thought we'd do a, a pre-assembly uh, clip just because it'll it'll give us a chance to have a look at the walls a bit closer where they're not all boxed together and I ain't going to have to lift up the whole thing every time I want to show you something. So, and it'll just explain the simple methods I've used to paint this thing. And like I say, I've just really, all I've done is really just play around, uh, teach myself a, a few things, see what works what didn't work and to be quite honest everything i did i just went with it because it it worked out okay to be quite fair but yeah the base we just painted all black um gave that a quick couple of coats of um primer and, and gloss black uh gloss black um haven't used expensive paints on this at all anywhere i think where we painted the backs of the walls and the base we just use really cheap i think these are two or three quid down at our local it's called home bargains it's just like a, a cheapo shop um didn't want to really spend much money on this thing or waste good paint on it so but i do want it looking half decent from um when you can see the back of it and what have you but yeah we just simply uh to paint the base all we've done so I laid a bit of black in the in the cracks, um, you know, and a bit round the sides and what have you. And then I literally just got, I think I just used dark brown and I just dragged it over, um, dragged the, the grey, sorry, over with the brush. These are the, t the only two brushes I've used for this whole project. I've used a Humbrel uh, stipple brush um just because i thought i thought that's the only one i had but would kind of work best for me and i just use this for the biggest stuff like painting round backs and but yeah i literally just brushed it over um it dragged the black out a little bit so it gave it a bit of shading around the around the cracks and what have you uh went around the edges first off started all i've done and this is me other bit of you know um professional gear i've used i've just been pulling off bits of bits of sponge and i've just been dabbing black around there we want i wanted it a bit more stained under the staircase and around the edges um and i, I didn't want to go too overboard on the on the main base so we just did a, a few 
few little random darker patches in it but i think i was I'd more than happy with that to be quite fair and all this we put around here it's just to sort of resemble uh plaster chippings off the off the walls and what have you or you know it could be bird cack you know whatever whatever your imagination wants to tell you like but once it's all together it kind of ties in but yeah so nothing you know it wasn't hard to do you know like I say I've never done anything like this before and you know it, it kind of looks okay we've got some nice shading around the around the cracks in the concrete probably overdid it a bit with cracks in concrete but you know like I say first attempt and I don't think it looked too looks too bad for a base uh, you know that that just set us up for the base and like I said just once we've got the staircase in I wanted it dark and dingy under the staircase uh, um, so yeah we got the walls all done um, I just based I mixed my own colour for the walls uh, just used craft paint um, I've only used craft paint really for this thing um, just a mixtures of greys and you know different colours for doors and stuff like that but yeah I just mixed up a bit of yellow with a bit of white just to get me the light yellow hours after started by basing up that and then it was just a case of you know just going around and playing around weathering it and stuff like that um, you know the, the cove in I, I based him I started with the black and then did a darker brown and then did a lighter brown um you know and, and just really used uh, the this uh brush just to and there's no right away no right or wrong way to do it to be quite honest you know it, it might be a bit over weathered but um i think it looks okay once it's all together and what have you um and then i just using the brush again with with the different greys and browns i think i've like I say i've got two greys with a black and that was that was the only colors i've used really so it's just sort of like i say just playing around and just seeing what you think looks okay and what makes you happy enough with build and what have you but again we just made it a bit more stained under the under the staircase got the billboard attached um I used a bit of Mod Podge over the over some of the brickwork because you know there is a lot of moss on that on that um, on the on that embossed brick. So I thought because it kind of blended in what with the walls because of the colour in places. You know I thought we'd just um, sheen it up a little bit. You know might as well make use of that moss and make it look really damp and wear up walls crumbling on the corner we just I put a bit more on um you know you can see you can see the damping walls and what's causing all cracking and what have you but yeah finished up the door um just again just used a bit of black on the sponge and just sort of dabbed it in where it'd be more heavily used where it'd be kicked on the bottom scratch built a door handle for it that's actually one of the seat levers from the 65 galaxy over a bit of plastic car just to quickly make something to to resemble a door handle um and yeah just uh i think it's it's turned out okay to be quite fair you know we've got that wall done like I say all we need is a bit of graffiti on it and then you know we've done done a bit more sort of moldy look on around around this area again use the mod pods just to add a bit of damp to the walls um you know it just brings out that brickwork a little bit more to be quite honest once it's what's once, once it's on there it look, doesn't look too dull and sort of adds to how dilapidated the, the rest of the, the workshop kind of looks but yeah we just made it darker again around the staircase you know um and under the staircase you know we're gonna have a, a few oil barrels under there and and what have you but again that pretty much just use the same methods as the first wall obviously um and then staircase you know we've just weathered that up uh it's 
just really sprayed it all black first um then started with brushing a bit of silver on the steps and then a bit of brown to sort of muck it all up or rusty it up a little bit uh use the cotton bud in in the steps just to smear it about get in the into the gaps a little bit more but yeah that, that's pretty much done and then we just again added uh i think it was uh, i've had a little thing of vallejo paint and i don't generally buy that stuff it just came in with a lot and you know it's, it's <clears throat> i couldn't sell it because it was it was is really lumpy and what have you i know you can pin it down to use it and what have you but it works really well just because it has a a bit of texture to it rather than, than it just looking like dabbed on paint it has got a it's quite chunky stuff when when you start using that with sponge like so uh, yeah we just dirted all that up added a few cobwebs in here and there that's just um all i did with that was a bit of matte mod podge pulled a cut and couple of uh cotton bud ends apart and just stuck them down um painted banister red dirty that up a little bit but yeah that's all ready to go in now um and then yeah we're just um these barrels came pretty much ready to go um like i say i paid for themselves because i sold the rest of the stuff they came with but we just weathered them up a little bit more just to Add a bit more dirt in the tops and painted the top silver, uh, the the cap silver and what have you. And that one's going to be stood up, so we just added a bit, a bit of plaster on top of there, like around the rim. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's pretty much it. You know, trying to keep it, let you know how basic it, it this build has been, and you know you don't need to spend a lot of money to. To do this kind of thing but i thought that was the best way just to to kind of show you how i've how i painted it in a nutshell in a very loose nutshell so to speak like so but yeah i think last thing to do is we just gotta crack this thing together um yeah i just gotta put this thing together do a bit of graffiti we'll do a bit of um a bit of extra detail in uh around the barrels and what have you once they're all on fit glued in under the staircase uh, i'm not too sure whether i'm gonna glue this permanently what i might do is i might just uh screw those two together um glue the staircase to this bit just because i'm thinking if i ever move or if i this ever does make it to a show it's going to make it a lot easier to sort of transport so to speak and you know i'm not gonna have to carry a big box of diorama around with me which is no doubt going to get broken anyway so uh, um so yeah i might go down that route and just leave the walls sort of sat in there you know they won't move once the, the back plates uh screwed together it'll just give me a few options but i'll see how it goes you know see if it you know if that works if it doesn't work i'll just permanently glue it all so uh, but yeah i think last bit we'll go to final assembly and we'll close the video off so we'll see you in a second right then well we've got this thing finally finished we are going to spin it round obviously in a second to have a better look at it uh i just thought before we do that i just let you know that i've taken a load of pictures of this throughout the build um as i've been doing stuff i'm no good at filming that kind of thing or trying to put a video together while i'm actually doing stuff so There'll be a load of pictures at the end of the video. It's going to, like I say, probably add a 10 minutes or so on to the end of the video. But if you do want to stick around and watch those um, as well, you know, please be my guest. Like, um, I'll probably put put pictures of the, the finished diorama first and then we'll I'll put all the in-progress uh, pictures after this uh, but yeah, I mean, just quickly to remind us again once more of what we were trying to achieve. It was just recreating this diorama. Um, the diorama for me was as inspirational as the model itself, which Terry did back in 1983. So uh, I think once we'd done the galaxy, like I said, it, it, the project was never finished until I got the diorama done. So 
you know, just loved all the um, detail he put into that, like, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to recreate any of this, I just wanted to put my own spin on it and make a, make a bit of a, more of a tribute to, to Terry and Small Talk and, and the other guys that played their part in this article, so, yeah, I'd like to say, I mean, we've seen enough of that magazine by now, like, but, yeah, I mean, this is what we've, what we've finally come up with, um, you know, I think it, I think it, to be quite honest, I'm really pleased with it. Um, you know, to say this is my first diorama, um, everything kind of works out well. I've had a lot of fun with this thing. I've had more fun than I've, I have with most models, like uh, building model cars. So, uh, I like to say it's been a, a big learning curve, but I think, you know, adding in details as we've gone along and just, sort of solving problems or seeing what works and what doesn't really really did work to be quite fair and um yeah i mean to be quite like I say we i did end up screwing this thing um on the back side uh just down there uh the base isn't glued to the actual walls so i can disassemble it that ladder's glued to the glued to this wall and um the and then we can just separate the two walls if we do want to have a move it like but yeah i think um i think it just really sets off the model to be quite honest with you and like I say i'm i wouldn't have been happy if i didn't do the the diorama um to to go along with it but and i think it was i think what got me is just like the when we built the galaxy uh the contrast between the the all the junk in the in the trunk lid um against the shiny paint i think the the diorama pretty much does that as well like and you know you could say it's a bit <clears throat> a bit symbolic of you know where man's priorities are when he when he cares about about a car too much you know he's put all his money into the car and just lets everything else around him uh crumble so to speak but yeah, I mean, like I say, I, I, I did want to do this as a bit of a tribute and, you know, if I wanted to recreate this, I could have probably recreated this sign, but I just wanted to do more of a, a tribute to Small Talk and Terry Ross. Uh, I mean, I'll just take this off here for now, just so we can have a have a quick look at it, like, but yeah, I just wanted to get Terry's name up there, so we just used... You know, I've got a load of these, like, duplicate magazines, so we just use that uh, at the top of each article, like, you know, to to sort of fill that billboard, so to speak. Um, you know, like I say, I really wanted Terry's name on this thing. And equally, you know, uh, there was other guys uh, who played a massive part, uh, so I wanted to get their names on the walls as well, so... Um, like in pictures, you know, we got graffiti on walls, but I didn't really fancy writing any of that stuff. Um, and I thought it was the the most appropriate place to to put Richard Coney's name up there. Richard Coney, he he did small talk for many years after Terry Ross. Um, did some great how tos and what have you. Um, did some great builds throughout that. And he's still he's still doing the scale auto page in Classic American magazine over here in the UK. And then we just added, you know, we wanted to put Mike's name up there as well. Like um you know, Mike Mike did it in the in the last years, but but actually small talk was still a thing and before Street Machine magazine um put an end to it, so to speak, put it to bed, but um so yeah i mean i think that was the, the tribute side of it you know i really wanted to do things just a little bit different for this thing and um then i was looking for posters like the, the, the terry's build have posters on the wall and when i cut this magazine up it, i found the perfect little picture for i mean it'll be a massive poster for this for this garage light but you know it has the, the street machine um magazine logo on there and 
uh, I'm I'm really happy I found that because it had the most fitting car as well. I mean, it was um, that's a old four Corsair. But done very much in the spirit of the Galaxy, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, that's got a chops roof and everything, but that was really the perfect picture I could find. Um, and then another little picture, we just, I had a duplicate of small talk where, I mean, I showed an example of the, the dioramas, I think earlier in the video. So uh, uh, we just added, I got a, a second one of them and they're all rough like, you know, I'm only buying the, the street machines for the small talks. And so some are coming without covers and what have you, but yeah, we just, um, as you can see, like all the chipping and on around the, around the edges, you know, kind of ties in with the walls. Now I did forget to say I did the same on bottom of walls, like, um, you know, just added, got the barrels in there and just did a bit of an oil stain underneath and what have you. And, you know, I did, I think they wanted to put the, uh, brush and shovel and the little cart in there just to, you know, that's the extent of the maintenance that they did to this place, you know, just giving it a sweep up every now and, when, now and again when too much plaster has fallen off the walls and what have you, but, um, yeah, and, and as you can see, all the, all the, you know, it's really dark and gloomy underneath there, just like I wanted it to be, and all the sponging effects with the, with the black paint up the walls where it's taking a bit of a beating and some black mold setting in around the, the top of there but yeah just finished off things like the like the door we just um did a bit of writing on there did a sign on there i just used a, a yellow paint pen for that which i had but yeah really pleased with that staircase to be quite fair um you know that that it just looks really well in that corner now. Now, to be honest, like I was, I was that was probably one of the things I was worried about the most. But yeah, we're just putting bits of graffiti in and what have you. But you know, I think the the glossiness on them on the on the brickwork works well and and what have you. But yeah, I just think um, I'm just really pleased with that thing now. To be quite honest with you. Um, I think, like I say, it, it just finishes off the model well. I think the only thing I didn't glue down, all the barrels are glued down, and like I said, I, I just put a bit of, um, a bit of that sort of plaster chipping on top of the on top of that barrel, just because we had that one stood up. But uh, I think, yeah, the only thing I didn't glue down because I didn't know whether I was going to use it. I just wanted a bit of something to. You know, to show they were put dust, uh, tipping all the rubbish into the into the little cart, like and. But I didn't know whether to keep that on there or not. I think for now it's it's absolutely grand, but. But yeah, I mean, I think. Um, to say that. That's only take what did I start it last Friday. Um, yeah, we started it last Friday and it's Friday today and I haven't worked on this every day, you know, this is just when I've had the spare, <clears throat> a spare um, hour or two over here. I mean, I've probably put 15 hours into this thing in total over the last seven days when I've had a bit of spare time, um, you know, when I've had enough, I've just walked away from it. But like I say, this is <clears throat> completely... Um, a novice build so to speak but it just goes to show you can create something which looks half decent i mean i, I wouldn't have a problem putting that on the on a show table if, if if i ever went to a show like um but yeah just with simple craft paints uh you know a bit of poly filler a couple of brushes um you know you can create something something pretty nice looking and I'm sure all the all the weathering stuff you can you can actually spend your money on would make this ten times better. But for me, I'd, it was more than enough. And you know, I think the whole builds probably probably owes me about ten quid in materials. To be quite honest with you, um, 
in total. I mean, a couple of things like the barrels, like I said, you know, they're paid for themselves and things like the doors, you know. You know, that, that just came in a, another lot, which, again, I sold the rest of the stuff and paid for itself. So I suppose, you know, adding a few bits and pieces on here and there, but I think 10 quid is probably max I've actually spent on this thing, to be quite fair, if that, to be to be honest with you. And um, Again, I think... Uh, I think we can just finally, for me, you can, I can finally close the chapter and, and close the book on this, on this build. You know, it's been a, like I say, a lifetime uh, ambition, so to speak, to get this, this whole project done, put together. And now I've done it, so um, I can move on to the next thing. Um, in all fairness, I was thinking of doing a, a few more of the galaxies and sort of different stages of of the car's life from from brand new to maybe a wreck and you know a bit like that group did for the scale auto and and adding scale autos um you know i wouldn't mind doing a few more of them and just through like say different stages i, I would really like this car to end up as a pro street at some point even you know keep the radius wheel rear arches just like a, a late 80s, early 90s Pro Street. Um, so I don't, it won't be the, the last will, the last Galaxy will will build on here. And I think that's my plan. I want to do a couple of versions of this. But um, yeah, for now, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I think it's a, I built it just as I wanted to build it as a tribute. Um, you know, to Small Talk, which was and Terry Ross and all the other guys, which completely carved away i reckon that the uk uh hobby stayed so strong and sort of reached out so many people um but yeah i think that i think that we can pretty much call that done now um so yeah i think we'll we'll be going on to the next project soon um you know i'm gonna get my teeth into one of the porsche builds uh, I've got a few other little bits and pieces I want to do. Like say on Sunday, I'll probably just throw out another filler video. Didn't get one done this week. Just had. To, um, I thought my time was better spent just rather than spending a couple of hours making a, a video about really nothing. And I just rather had my time on this and and got this finished for this weekend. So uh, and clear the rest of my weekend. Like so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope you've enjoyed this video. You know, I'm hoping that, you know, if you if you think that, you know, building a diorama is a bit, a bit out of your skill set, I think the message is here, you know, just give it a try. You'll have a lot of fun with it. I Like I say, I had a hell of a lot of fun building this thing. Um, You know, just play around with, with a few br different brushes and sponges and, you know, you'll you'll be amazed at what you can achieve like and if you mess up all you need to do is cover it up again and start again so but um yeah so i think what we'll do is we'll i'm just going to take a load of snaps of this we're going to shove them at the end um if you if you want to stick around for them please do like you know there's there, there will be quite a lot but um you know failing that you know thanks ever so much for watching the video again hope you've enjoyed it hope you found it uh a little bit interesting and you know if it if it's if it makes one one or two people just try it themselves and, and you know the the job's done here like so but yeah so whatever you're doing for the rest of the weekend you know we'll see you at, we'll just see you on sunday and you know see you in the next video okay see you bye